now just for you guys just for this video you guys i've been searching and researching and digging and looking in to stuff just so i could give you guys this video so stay tuned welcome back growth family it's your granddad AO, and the growth doesn't stop so in this video today i'm gonna tell you guys everything that you need to know about the coronavirus now by the end of today you will be able to fully understand what is actually going on with the coronavirus and you'll be able to make a decision for yourself whether you know the world is actually ending or it's not really what it seems so in this video i'm going to cover what it is how it spreads how to stop it and what is going on in the world right now and then at the end of the video just to wrap it up i'm just going to be giving a quick overview of what's going on in different parts of the world how they're responding to it and things that are going on now what is it coronavirus is a family of viruses and two of the other members of that, that family group that are already known are SARS and MARS now they're not that around they're not that common now that's not the one that's going around now the one that's going around now is COVID-19 it is believed that the reason this outbreak has started is due to animal consumption like live freshly killed animal consumption because people were eating animals they believe that when they freshly kill them if the animal has the virus on it then it has now been mutated and transmuted amongst humans now whereas before it was just going around the animal kingdom the symptoms the symptoms are pretty close to the flu and I feel like that's probably why it's spread so much just because people haven't really known or been aware of when they actually have it they just went, oh I just have a common flu and it can lead to shortness of breath and phenomia, I can't really say that word but phenomia, I'm going to put it there just so you guys can actually see it and pronounce it for yourselves it has however been around since 2002 how it spreads now it spreads exactly like a flu once again it's like a flu so when you sneeze when you cough come in contact of not washing your hands etc just general germs getting passed around that is how it spreads but it is not airborne a lot of people think that it is airborne disease it's not an airborne virus it's not airborne so please stop saying and telling people, making more people afraid that making them think it's an airborne thing. It's not airborne. The most airborne it's believed to be is when I sneeze and the water vapor, the, the mucus in my sneeze or my cough makes it airborne. But it's not generally in the air, just floating around waiting to start infect you when you breathe. That's not the case. How do we stop it? First thing first, catch it, bin it, kill it. Now this is arguably actually the most important because if we stop the spreading of it then we're all fine now catch it bin it kill it so catch it you know you sneeze cool you catch it you throw the tissue in the bin now you wash your hands and after you wash your hands you need to wash your hands thoroughly and you need to dry them thoroughly because germs thrive in a wet or damp environment so if our hands are still damp because we didn't want to dry them properly the remaining germs that might still be on our hands will thrive them you don't want that next strengthen your immune system you can do this right now whether you're sick whether you're perfectly fine regardless now how do you strengthen your immune system regular exercise stop drinking stop smoking increase your fruit and your vegetable intake now drinking and smoking let's be honest for me it sounds very easy for me on the outside in yeah just stop it but i understand it's not just click of the finger thing but you will work towards stopping it if you want to increase your immune system cool now increasing your fruit and vegetable intake another thing you can actually do just like that how do you do that simple go to your shop buy some ginger buy some oranges buy some kiwi go on the internet research what fruits and what vegetables can actually help you increase your immune system strengthen your immune system regular exercise that's not that hard you know just exercise regularly it's good for you there's no reason you shouldn't exercise regularly you don't exercise every day because your body needs to rest i've done a video about resting watch the video now there we go those are literally things that you can do right now 
to strengthen your immune system to help you be or not even be affected by this corona pandemic now the reason why i believe that immune system is very important is because of our immune system is our last defense if our last defense is our strongest defense then we're perfectly fine and it's always the last defense whereas catch up being a killer is good but it's not perfect because yeah there's just other ways for us to other people and for us to come in contact with the disease but that disease the virus has to go through our immune system can't go over it can't go under it has to go through it there's no way around it has to go through it so that's why you need to we need to increase our immune systems right now right now what's the coronavirus looking like in the world right now right now as i am recording this there has been over 152,000 cases of corona and these are just the reported ones but there's only been about 5,800 deaths so when you weigh up case to death ratio begin to realize that it's actually very low now if you want to actually look at the statistics side of it i've researched and i found out that when you look into it in greater detail so the death rate goes varies between 0.7 percent and 3.4 percent i believe factors of that are also the growing age population for example in italy like how old you are and those sort of factors and please take into mind that mers and sars that other versions of the coronavirus <laughs> much more deadly much more that the death rate of those crazy in comparison so crazy in comparison now so the disease originated in china but china's cases are decreasing whereas everyone else's cases are increasing so that's a very interesting thing to sort of look at when you think about it be like oh wow so it's at the cases are there's possibility of it you know getting better soon so you know not really the end of the world as it may seem but like you said like i said sorry the cases are increasing take in mind now that there's actually no cure of this moment of time but although there is no cure they're still giving the corona patients drugs that help with other things such as like hiv etc it's actually helping a lot of these people like i said once again it's not necessarily the end of the world china's situation so china forms about 90 percent of the world's cases of corona now there's been over 81,000 cases reported in china but over 61,000 recovered patients so far of the corona now looking deeper into the data i found out that the number of existing cases to new cases reported has decreased on 3.8 to 0.32 so what that means is that the cases in general are old cases of corona whereas before there was a lot higher of new points so what china has done they added in social distancing measures what that means is kind of just literally just keeping everyone distant from each other so then the people that are sick can sort of stay together not in a rude way but can isolate themselves and heal hopefully and then without actually infecting people what the problem is everyone's all interacting everyone's around each other so one person will get healed but they've already passed it to two other people and then they'll get healed but they've already passed it to two other people so it just spreads and spreads but then if they can reduce it to them actually not passing that on to anyone or just not passing it on to as many people therefore the number of cases decrease that is what we're seeing and i believe that is why they've been able to decrease so much now what they've labeled these social distancing measures as movement restrictions they've been doing body temperature checks as well they literally they have technology now it's literally where you check someone's body temperature if the body temperature is more than normal then you're kind of gonna know so all of these measures together have been able to actually decrease the amount of cases in china and help reduce the spreading of it now italy's problem italy's problem is that their population is described as an aging population do you know what that means that means that the population is getting old and there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with old people i'm granddad ao generally speaking old people have a weaker immune system so what that really means is they're more susceptible to catching the coronavirus if they catch it they spread it and it just gets worse the situation's gonna grow so what it is asked is for people to stay at home now this is called quarantine when you're not 
supposed to be leaving your house. So right now, Italy, pretty much under quarantine. UK, what is going on with us? What's going on? Especially us England lot, man. What is actually going on? Boris Johnson, all of that, it's, it's just scramble, mess up. So, even though the reporting in the UK has been so poor, there's actually only been, unfortunately, 21 deaths, which isn't that bad. Obviously, I don't wish death on anyone, but we are actually lucky and I'm grateful that it's only 21 deaths because it shows that it's actually not as bad as what we think. And the reason I believe we think it's so bad is because of social media. This is the first pandemic, pandemic that we've had where social media is actually at its peak or as, as big as it is because obviously social media is just growing, growing, growing. So social media and news and media itself just being so large now, it just pushes all of these different agendas and everything and just so much noise in all of our heads and all of our faces and everything and it's just not it. It's just making us think that the situation's worse but I really blame social media to be fair but news is pushing a lot of it anyway. Now, definitely I would advise you to go and watch Boris Johnson's speech, but if you haven't, I've got a few quotes here that kind of sum up what he's said. He said that many families are going to lose their loved ones before their time. Not nice at all, Boris. Government has a plan. Now, what he said the plan is, is to do the right thing at the right time and they're not going to do anything now because it's not the right time whatever that means now he's also said that basically he said he doesn't want to do anything because he wants to create herd immunity herd immunity herd immunity is when a large group of the community population whatever you want to call it has caught something developed immunity to it and now they can no longer spread it because their bodies are immune to it so their bodies just reject it quote on quote he said stop preventing start delaying that's what they're trying to do their approach is just to start delaying and i hate to say it i kind of see what they were hopefully trying to say on the terms of that it's gotten to a point where they can't actually prevent an outbreak just because the spread is probably too big for them to manage but what they're hoping is that by delaying when the peak is the peak of the outbreak could we be closer to when they have a cure i'm gonna hopefully try to get a graph in for you guys peak of the outbreak will be closer to when the cure is brought in and then that way the nhs is more efficient at dealing with those people so more people will be able to see and there'll be less deaths whereas if the peak happens early and we're not prepared for it when there's no cure it's like all these people are just going to be suffering that part i understand but the rest of it i don't know what he's talking about this guy he just needs help part of their delaying plan is that they have now decided to stop large gatherings so what does this mean for university students no varsity i'm a university student playing basketball next thing i know i can't play basketball because it's cancelled that's not nice i, I don't understand because some universities are cancelled university but my university hasn't cancelled it yet so I just don't understand that it can't be that serious if you're not going to cancel if you're going to cancel a smaller event but you're not going to cancel uni where I'm more likely to catch it rather than a small gathering anyway Boris has this idea that it's smarter not to close the schools right now he believes this because if they close the schools he says that um, the parents of the nurses the nurses are going to have to go back home and that means they won't be able to go to work do you know what I mean obviously they have to look after their kids but he also said that if the grandparents are sick and they're the ones that have to look after the kids they're not going to get the kids sick it's a bit thing because a lot of people also believe that the actual reason why Boris doesn't want to close the schools is because then he would have to admit that the only time a lot of children eat is actually at school President Trump said that the UK could be added to the ban list there's a lot going on and that's going to keep on growing that that whole travel ban thing at the moment when it's a pandemic people just don't want people to travel and spread things argentina also demand that if you are traveling from anywhere literally anywhere um you have to when you arrive in their country you have to self isolate for 14 days and then get tested and then obviously if you're good then you can go about free i've banned flights for 30 days if you're going to cyprus peru there's travel problems and definitely need to have a look at in the us 
there has been 57 deaths and about just under 3,000 cases at this moment of time. Australia has imposed a self-quarantine for people travelling from abroad. They've also banned public events. The World Health Organization have said that Europe is now the, the epicenter of the pandemic. So if you're looking to travel to Europe, I would personally, I would advise that you just wait, just wait for like the cure to come out and for it to die down while you travel to the epicenter of a pandemic. The FCO rule out all but essential travel to mainland China, not including Hong Kong, four parts of Spain and Italy altogether. For all the rest of the travel bans and travel restrictions, the Mirror have a very good and full list of everything up to date about what is going on. And that concludes today's video. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this video useful. If you've watched this video, you are now part of the Growth Family. So make sure you hit that bell, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you comment, comment any questions, anything you found most useful, anything you didn't know before watching this video. Just let me know. Um, make sure that you share on social media, let people know what is actually going on just because so many people are confused, there's the information is all fuzzy, there's so much noise so by watching this video now you're able to actually just fully understand what's going on in about what 14 minutes? Not that much time out of your day. Thank you, make sure you check out the other videos on my channel and I'll see you guys again in a couple seconds because you've got to watch one of these videos. Thank you.